Hello YouTube and all who inhabit it, my name is NitoZ and welcome back to another video. Today I bring you the first major update for Capture the Flag. This section of the video will be all about how to set up and use the Capture the Flag data pack. Before I start this, let me just say thank you for 500 subscribers. That is insane, and I might make a more dedicated video about it. Second plug is the Discord. On this Discord server, you can report bugs, socialize, or even play the CTF pack with others. Link in the description. Alright, enough of that, let's see how to install it. Okay, so how you actually download this thing is very simple. So, what you want to do is just click on the link in the description. It'll take you to this Planet Minecraft page where you should see Capture the Flag by Neato Z version 2.7. So, all you need to do is scroll down and you'll see this big button that says Download Data Pack. So, we just want to click on that. And then, it'll give me this prompt in my Firefox window. Now, I'm using Firefox. I imagine that you'll probably be using Chrome or something, so it'll probably go down here and it'll ask you if you want to keep or discard it. Make sure you hit keep. I'm going to hit OK. And now, as you can see up in my downloads folder, it is just finished downloading. So now you want to drag this window to the side, then open up your downloads tab or whatever. If you're using Chrome, you can just drag it out. I'm going to drag it out onto my desktop. And as you can see, we have a zip folder here. So we can now close out of our web browser. And now we're left on our desktop with just this zip folder. Now that we've done that, we want to open up our Minecraft folder. So let's hold down the Windows key and the R key, and that'll open up the run menu. Now by default, it won't say anything. So what you you want to do is type in percent app data percent then hit enter and then this will bring up a long list of all the programs that are in your computer but what we're looking for is dot minecraft so i'm going to double click on that now you'll see your whole minecraft folder so now we want to go to saves Okay, so now that we're in our saves folder, we just want to click on the world file that we want to install this in. So I'm going to double click on my video world, then I'm going to go to data packs, and then all I want to do is drag this zip folder into here, just like that. Now I can right click on it, hit extract all, and then it'll come up with this prompt, select a destination. Uh, by default, it'll be wherever you are currently, so I'm just going to hit extract, like that. And now you see if we double click on that, all we need to do, if we go to uh, uh, funny video for example, data packs, then go to this, you'll see that we're right in there. Now I'm just going to warn you right now, don't go in here, okay? If you're interested to see my process of how I coded this, you don't. It's it's messy in there, and uh, I am i didn't know a lot of uh, the, the functions um, in Minecraft uh, b before I made this, so it's it's very messy. It doesn't look great, so if you're looking to go in there to critique my code, if you're looking in there to specifically critique someone, then you'll have a whale of a time, okay? But this, if you're looking for good, genuine code in Minecraft data pack language, you don't want to go in there. It's messy. So now that you've downloaded the pack, all that we need to do to start this is to type in a few commands. So I'm going to start by typing in slash function, and then we're going to go down to ctf pack colon dot setup. So I'm going to hit tab on that and then just hit enter. So now this big long tell raw command is going to come out of that, but don't worry about it. This is just how the game of capture the flag works, but that doesn't really matter since you're watching this video. So the other thing that you'll see is that it'll say that your name is the moderator for this game, and that's because you typed in uh, the command to trigger this. So it says, if you trigger this message, you are now this game's moderator. It also come up here with a series of commands. It'll say, click here to see instructions, click here to allow players to select their team and class, click here to start the game, and click here to reset the game. Then it'll, get, it'll give you this little note. Don't worry about any of that for the time being. For now, we're just going to set up these eggs. So the other thing that you should have gotten is these five spawn eggs, okay? They seem a little bit intimidating, but don't worry about it. So the first thing that we need to do is place down the red and blue flag. So you see that this is blue base right now. We're playing on two fort in Minecraft, but don't worry about that. Uh, so we're going to put the blue flag here, right? Just like that. that. That'll be the blue team's flag. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, except for the red flag. So now we have blue flag, red flag. It's all good. Next, we have to put down the spawns. So you can actually have as many spawns as you want. And when you die, it'll actually put you at a random one uh, based on what your team's color is. So I'm going to put down one red spawn over there, one red spawn over here, and then on the other side I'm obviously going to put down two of the blue spawns, just like that. 
Now do be warned that these spawns should probably be placed a pretty good distance away from the flag. See, we have probably about 10 blocks or so. And the reason for that is that there is actually spawn protection. So if you're on the opposite team and you get too close to this blue spawn, it will actually kill you and uh, vice versa with the red team. So just make sure that they are far away enough that you can still grab the flag without immediately dying. All right, final spawn egg is the ammo kits. So these are pretty self-explanatory. All you really need to do is place these down really wherever you want them, and they're basically just ammo for all the kits and such. So I'm just gonna place down two on each side, and I'm going to show you guys how those work in a second. But make sure that you don't touch them right now because that is just not, not good for the time being. So just leave them alone, don't touch them, or else they're gonna go away, and that's not good. We need to start the game first, but don't worry about that for right now. Okay, so now that you have all the flags, the spawns, and all of your ammo kits placed down so far, now we can allow players to choose their team in class. So I'm just going to hit this button right here, and this chat message is going to appear. And now, for this next part, my lovely assistant Tapes is going to come and help me. Hello, you. So, uh, where it says choose your team, you're either going to choose red or blue, make sure the teams are even. And then where it says choose your class, um, there are one of five, and we're going to go over how each of these classes work. So I'm just going to go as a scout. And as you can see, uh, I will spawn at one of these two spawns. So, also, by the way, don't worry about players touching the flags or the ammo kits prematurely. If they get too close to the flag before the game has been started, they will die just like that. Uh, so, obviously, tapes died because I haven't yet triggered the game to start. Also, quick side note, don't worry if you accidentally touch an ammo kit just like this, because obviously it clears your inventory, but that doesn't matter, because if you are the mod, you will get uh, all of your spawn eggs right up here, and obviously only the mod will get this. So, obviously, tapes over there wouldn't get it. So, once everyone has chosen their teams, their classes, and obviously all the flags and such have been placed down, we can scroll back up here to start the game. Now again, you'll be teleported to one of your two spawns, obviously, as you can see, tapes was as well, and now the game has basically begun. Uh, so I'll show off capping in a moment, don't do it yet, tapes, looking at you. Uh, first I'm going to show off how the ammo kits work, let me just unload a few arrows, tapes just do a bit of damage to me. Where are you, you little idiot? Yeah, there you go, just hit me with the salmon a couple times. Alright, that should be good enough. Alright, so now, if I touch this ammo kit, as you can see, all, everything here was replenished and now if we wait just a bit of time and now as you can see the ammo kit is back what are you doing over there all right so now let's take a look at some of the kits so the first kit that we're going to take a look at is obviously the first kit which is the scout so i'm just going to take a look in here and as you can see we have our little scout head we have a shirt curse of binding and protection too and this is the color of the team that we're on curse of binding is on all of these it's just so that you can't take off your armor and be completely invisible other thing is uh we have these pants curse of binding prot 2 and we have sneakers curse of binding prot 2 and then we have a little quote around there uh just from the scout um, as you'll see with pretty much all of the items from all classes. Now, cool thing about the sneakers is that when you're holding them, or when you're wearing them rather, you'll actually get a speed boost. And uh, another thing about the scout is that he will have a jump boost all the time. Can't, it's a little bit difficult to code in a double jump, so uh, I thought that it would just be nice to settle for a good old speed boost. Next up is the Force of Nature. Uh, this is his primary, so primaries are in green. Uh, it has multi-shot, quick charge 2, and again, that little quote. Um, this is the Sandman, this is his secondary, his melee, um, and again, that is uh, in red, that's what the secondaries are, that's knockback 1, sharpness 5, uh, another quote there, and then the Criticola, this is his third um, item, it's uh, obviously another little quote there, and the thing about the Criticola is that when you drink it, you get a bit of resistance, you get a bit of strength, and that's essentially what the crits are. Alright, now I'm just going to show off a bit of a 1v1 between uh, uh, two, two scouts, so Tapes, if you could just come down here. Three, two, one, go. So obviously that force of nature does a pretty good amount of damage. Now I'm gonna go in with my Sandman, I'm gonna try and hit him a couple times. Now obviously this isn't gonna do a ton of damage, but as you can see, he's drinking the Criticola, and that is going to significantly increase the amount of damage that it would do. Cause uh, as I said earlier, you get that strength two buff and that resistance two buff. 
um, because obviously it gives you crits and it gives you some of that resistance. All right, so let's move on to our next class, and this is actually a good time for me to show off the choose class function. So you should see that everyone in their inventory gets this little fishing rod that says choose class. So if you right click on that, it'll say choose your class. Scout, Heavy, Medic, Sniper, Spy, and this is actually just a way of choosing your class midway through the game. So it'll say click here to see information about the classes, we're not really going to worry about that currently, but I'm just going to go Heavy since he is the second class that we're working with, and we can get on with that. So let's take a look at what the Heavy has. So obviously he has his head, he has his shirt, Curse of Binding, Pants, Curse of Binding, Protection 6, I know it seems like a lot, but it is warranted, and the boots, Curse of Binding, Protection 6, and obviously you have that quote there. Now, the reason why uh, these are special and they're called boots is because these actually give the heavy slowness, because if you ever played Team Fortress 2, you'd know that the heavy is slower than all the other classes because he's a fat Russian. Alright, so, uh, let's take a look at some of his items. So we got a minigun, fist, sandwich in that order, minigun, uh, multi-shot, quick charge 5, the burning you feel, it is Shane, little quote there, uh, Fist sharpness one, that's just a stone axe, and then sandwich, um, this is cool because if you drink it, obviously, again, if you've ever played Team Fortress 2, if you drink it, it will give you a full heal. So, Tapes, if you could come down here, we can show a little duel between the heavies. Here he is. Alright, three, two, one, go. So, obviously, that minigun, it's gonna have a very quick firing speed, but don't fret, this is quite balanced. Um, the, the arrows that come out of the minigun do significantly less damage. So now we can show off the sandwich as he's doing. As you can see, if I drink it, I'll get a full heal. Now, uh, let's show off some melee. So obviously that does some good damage. The heavy also does not have a lot of knockback, because again, he's a fatty. Uh, so he's gonna stay fairly in place. And, uh, yeah, this is a pretty fun class to play. Next up on the list is the medic. So I'm just gonna click here. We're going to transfer over to the medic. And now, uh, so let's take a look at this kit here. So we have our medic head, we have our shirt, Curse of, or Curse of Binding Prot 2, pants, uh, Curse of Binding Prot 2, and shoes, uh, Curse of Binding Prot 2. So these are basically what normal classes will have, except a lot of them have leather, leather pants instead, because that's the standard 125 health, but, you know, it's fine. So, uh, let's take a look at items. We have the Crusader's Crossbow, Quick Charge 2, um, again, a quote, and you can see that little splash text under there says, shoot your allies to heal them. So, this weapon does not actually do damage, because, as you can see in my offhand, I have these things called syringes. On contact, these will actually heal your, uh, your friends and your opponents alike, so make sure that you're not hitting your opponents with this crossbow. Next up, we have the Bone Saw, Sharpness 3, I'm going to saw through your bones, another quote, quote there, and then we have the Medigun, which says, I am the Ubermensch, um, and then you can hook your allies with this, and it'll actually begin to heal them. So, uh, Tapes, just for this quick de demonstration, demonstration, I'm going to ask that you join my team. So, this is a quick uh, opportunity for me to just show off the moderator options. So if I right click on this, you'll see obviously only the mod will have this, so this will not be in tapes inventory because he was not the moderator, uh, but I can click here to see the instructions, I can click here to allow players to select their team in class, and I can click here to reset the game. So I'm just going to click here to allow players to select their team in class, and tapes just join the blue team. So um, I just want to show off real quick how the Crusader's crossbow works. So tapes, if you could pull out your bone saw and just do a bit of damage to me, I'll tell you when to stop. Alright, I'd say that's significant enough. So, now, take out your Crusader's crossbow, and you'll see that if he shoots me, it's gonna heal me a bit, okay? And now, do be warned that this will also heal your enemies. So, if I was an enemy of tapes, and he shot me with that, it would actually heal me. So, do be warned of that. Next thing I want to show off is the Medigun. So, tapes, if you could do a little bit more damage to me again with the Bone Soul, I'll tell you when to stop. A bit more. Alright, that should be good. So, now, uh, tapes is gonna hook me with the Medigun. And as you can see, I will get a bit of a regeneration effect, and after a while, you'll see that that is now a full regen. Pretty cool stuff. So the final thing that I want to show off with Medic is the Uber Charge. So you'll see, flashing between the blue reset and the red reset is something that says Uber Charge. So, if I walk up near one of my teammates, as you can see, that will begin to go up, and it's X out of 2,500. And when that bar fills up, I'm actually going to get a potion titled Uber. So once that fills up, I will come back and show you guys. 
And now, as you can see, I have gotten Uber. So, this is a potion, obviously you have that little uh, splash text there by the medic. And actually, when I throw this on me and my teammates, that's right, I can hit more than one, so this is better than traditional Uber, that's why it takes a little bit longer. Um, if I throw this on my teammates and myself, then we will all get glowing as well as strength 2, glowing 2, and resistance. So now, you'll see, we do a lot more damage, but obviously, that's not really, it's still not really gonna do very much, mostly just because this is a heavy and he also has resistance, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's funny. And the resistance 2 is so high that you literally don't take damage, so I don't know why I'm doing this in the first place, because, how did I kill you? Alright, so now we can move on to our second to last class, the Sniper. So I'll respawn in and we'll take a look at our kits. So, we have the Sniper Head, the Shirt Cursor Binding, Prot 2, Pants Cursor Binding, uh, Prot 2, and Shoes Cursor Binding, Prot 2, of course. And we have the uh, Kukri, uh, which is Sharpness 3, obviously you got that quote there. The Huntsman, which is Power 4, and uh, the cool thing about the Huntsman is that if I hold it in my hand, it'll actually zoom me in, uh, sort of like a scope, and I get slowness. So, that's interesting. And then finally, we have the Gerardi. Now, <laughs> interesting thing about the Gerardi is that it's piss, and when I throw it on my enemies, and I'm also going to throw it on myself, uh, just so that we can get a little bit of an example. Yeah, as you can see, tapes it there. And if I throw it on myself, you'll see that I get weakness uh, 5, which is going to make me do significantly less damage, and it's going to make me more susceptible to damage. And I also get glowing. And the cool thing about that is we'll see later with the spy class, but spies can go invisible, and when um, there's a sniper and the spy gets Jurati thrown on them, they'll actually have the glowing effect unmasking the spy for the time being. The other interesting thing about the Jurati is that if I throw it um, and I'm like right on the outskirts of it, you'll see that since uh, I threw it, tapes didn't want to live in the same world as tapes. Anyway, so if I throw it a little bit far away from myself and I still get some of the blast, you'll see that it's significantly less. Instead of 25, I'm only getting about 8 seconds. So you really want to make sure that you hit this right on the nose. Um, so I'm gonna grab, <laughs> I'm gonna grab another ammo pack and uh, we're just gonna show off um, again, what uh, the fighting would be like. But, uh, so let's take a look at the sniper's weapons in a 1v1. You can't hide from me. And it's good, yeah, as you can see, it's gonna do a lot of damage, even from body shots. Um, so you gotta be sure of that. Nope, you get none. Haha, I win! Don't che I didn't cheat, you fool! <laughs> okay, he threw Jurati on me. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm gonna do a lot, I'm gonna do a lot less damage now. Yeah, see, I, yeah, that was, that was not good. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty interesting stuff, and, uh, yeah, that's the sniper kit. Alright, next up on the list is Spy. Let's take a look at the Spy's loadout. So we got our Spy head, our, uh, shirt, cursor binding, our pants, and our shoes. So you'll see that these don't actually have any enchants on them, and the reason for that is that the Spy really isn't supposed to do much. I see you, tapes. Spy isn't really supposed to do much. He's basically just supposed to try and get behind the enemy lines, kill as many people as possible, but if he's found out, he's probably gonna die. Uh, so that's why those don't really have any protection on them. So, enough with the armor, let's take a look at this. Uh, so we see we have the revolver, piercing one, quick charge two. There's no real reason that the revolver has piercing one, I just thought that it would be a little bit interesting, since this isn't really a super viable weapon. Uh, then we have the knife, which is sharpness four. Obviously you have that, that splash text there, and we'll get into how the knife works with uh, backstabs and such later. Now you also have the cloak and the disguise kit. So, let's start out with the knife. I'm gonna have tapes come up here, and as you can see, he's just gonna walk forward a bit. Now, I'm, uh, as you can see, his back is facing me, and if I swing my sword... Next up is the cloak. So, tapes, I'm gonna need to backstab you a few more times to, just to show how this stuff works. So, if you could just come up here real quick. So, let's show off the cloak here. So, tapes, if you could just come up here, face the other direction, then walk forward a bit. So, I'm going to drink this cloak, and as you can see, I am completely invisible, but if I come up behind tapes with my knife, stab him, um, it'll, it'll completely erase that effect from me, and I'll get all of my armor and such back. No, no. Alright, so, um, I am now going to show off how the disguise kit works. So, tapes, again, if you could just co come up here, turn around, walk forward a bit. 
So now, if I drink the dis th this disguise kit, it's going to come up with this menu that says disguise kit. So say I want to disguise as a sniper or something. So if I click that, I will now be a sniper. And you'll see uh, I have this little particle effect. That basically just means that I am on your team. I'm not on the enemy team because there's no good way to communicate that to uh, your actual teammates without a particle effect or something like that. So, uh, you'll see that with just like what uh, happened earlier, um, I get that particle, particle effect again, and if I swing, it kills them, and I lose that just like how it was before. And now real quick, I just want Tapes to show off what it would look like from my perspective. So Tapes, if you could go spy and then just uh, disguise for me. So here's Tapes, he's gonna drink that disguise kit, then he's just gonna click on one, now, as you can see, he's a sniper on my team, and I can't see that particle effect, but unlucky for him, he's dead. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, anyway, uh, so, last thing that I just quickly- I'm sorry. Okay, last thing that I just quickly- Stop it, bad. You stop- <laughs> Laugh at my tears. Alright, last thing that I want to show about the disguise kit is, for example, let's just say that, uh, as you can see here, I have the disguise kit menu. Let's say I disguise as a medic, and then tapes, I'm just gonna have to come around and kill you. Let's say I lose that, um, and now I am now back to my old spy self, but I have checked to- because obviously it would be pretty broken if- because obviously I don't have the disguise kit anymore, so I sh really shouldn't be able- to disguise again just by doing this. So if I try to do this, it'll say you don't have a disguise kit, stupid. Um, so I can't, obviously I can't even trick or, trigger the objective anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, that works pretty flawlessly. But obviously if I grab an ammo kit just like that and then I try to do it, then it'll work just how I want it to. All right, final thing that we need to do is just show off how capture the flag itself works. So tapes, you can choose any class you really want. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, and I'm just going to real quickly show off how this works. So let's say, for example, um, I'm running to Tapes' base. So upon the, the game starting, um, your sole goal is only to get the flag and bring it back to your base. So say I touch the red flag. Now, as you can see, I have this cool little particle effect. I'll, I'll also have glowing, and uh, I will now have the flag. So I'm running back, running back. I touch where my flag would be. And as you can see, it says Nito Z has captured the red flag, and the blue score will tick up one, okay? So now, let's do that again. I'm gonna grab the red flag, but this time, Tapes is gonna kill me. You can do it. You can do it. There you go. So yeah, now that that's happened, the flag is now on the ground, and uh, so now you'll see that at the bottom of the screen, red reset is now ticking up. Now the flag is there, and when that reaches 45 out of 45, it will reset, but I don't want that to happen. And as you can see, if I grab it, I can just bring it back to my base, and obviously it resets that timer. Stop it. Bad. Bad. Alright, now, I am going to show off how that reset works. So, as you can see, I have this. Tapes is going to kill me. So now, that's now on the ground, and now, um... I'm just going to show off how it works if that reaches 45 to 45. And now, as you can see, a chat message will appear that says red flag returned. And now Tapes' red flag is now back there. So Tapes, if you could just grab my flag, this is the last thing that I want to show off. If I grab his, and he grabs mine, just like that. Now, I just want to show off that both flags do not have to be at the base in order for someone to cap. So if I, I just need to go right where the flag would be, and Tapes just needs to go right where his flag would be, and obviously everything gets reset, and we have a jolly old time. That's just about it for how to set it up. Now on with the gameplay.